How many of you know that feeling of digging your feet deep in the sand as you walk along the shore and you just feel immediately at ease and the tension from your day just melts away? Growing up, I spent my summers at the beach of the Jersey Shore. Little did I know back then that I would find a career where I get to heal people and play in the sand every day. How cool is that? After graduating from the University of Pennsylvania School of Social Work, I worked with children in residential facilities, foster care, and inpatient psychiatric hospitals. I quickly realized when working with traumatized children, they needed a deeper level of healing than behavioral plans or giving them stickers to reward good behavior. I desperately wanted a way to understand these kids, to discover what was going on below the surface. But how? One day, I shared with my sister my struggle to better help these traumatized children. And she shared with me the Family and Play Therapy Center in Philadelphia. I was intrigued and I wanted to know more. For children, their language is play. And the toys are their words. So it made total sense to me that children could heal through play. So I signed up right away in a class in something called sand tray therapy. And wow, my mind was blown. In this therapy, a tray of sand, small toys, and sometimes water are used to create a person's inner world in miniature. And in this therapy, how you create your sand tray is controlled by you, by moving these objects within the tray. Your three-dimensional sand tray scene is a creative, non-verbal approach to express what is happening in your inner world. I was amazed at what my personal sand tray revealed about me. And I felt this sense of calm and clarity in both my body and my mind. My sand tray spoke to me in a way that words could not. So I thought, if the creation of my own sand tray was this profound, I needed more training so I could help others, especially children, heal and communicate through this modality. I took a deep dive into this work for the next 20 plus years with extensive training so I could do this work competently, ethically, and safely. Sand tray therapy was developed by Margaret Lowenfeld in the 1930s. She was a British pediatrician and a pioneer in the field of child psychology. Lowenfeld had recalled H.G. Wells's book titled Floor Games that he wrote in 1911, where he was discussing his sons playing with toy soldiers and working out their conflicts through play. She discovered when children played in the sand with small toys and other objects that we call miniatures, they were able to more deeply communicate than in a talk therapy. 
Dora Koff, who studied under Lowenfeld, summarized sand tray therapy as the child plays out an unconscious problem like a drama in the sand. He or she transposes that conflict from the inner world to the outer world to make it visible. Just by touching the cool, smooth sand has an immediate regulating and sensory effect beyond what is visibly understood. And the placement and arrangement of the miniatures bring the brain and the body into the therapy experience. As Carl Jung stated, often the hands will solve the mysteries that the intellect has struggled with in vain. Sand tray therapy connects our conscious mind and our unconscious mind. It is a container to hold big emotions and difficult stories. The physical sand tray creates a safe psychological distance from your problems, allowing the objects and space to express and voice what is happening in your inner world. Now this is especially important when words are not enough to communicate and heal trauma, anxiety, and grief. Our brains struggle to verbalize and to make sense of our thoughts and our feelings when we are in survival mode. Our brains are stuck. We have all heard the phrase, there are no words. Dr. Bessel van der Kolk, the author of The Body Keeps Score, he talks about trauma being stored in the body. If trauma is nonverbal, it needs to come out non-verbally first. And then the person can tell the story of what happened. In sand tray therapy, complicated and confusing emotions that are trapped in the body are transposed onto these miniatures so they can have a narrative and a voice. They are your voice. Some believe that it is Plato who said that you can discover more about a person in one hour of play than in a year of conversation. Let me share some examples of what sand tray looks like and how it works. The stories are real, but the names are fictitious. Maya was five years old when she came to my office. She was struggling with significant temper tantrums, separation anxiety, and she had just started wetting the bed. I invited Maya to create a story in the sand. She added a big dragon, a small panda trapped in a ring of fire, and two monkeys. As Maya would play, she would continually say, the dragon is so big and the panda is so small. So I would repeat, the dragon is so big and the panda is so small. By repeating these words, Maya felt heard. She then added two monkeys. One monkey held its ears because it was too loud. The other monkey held its mouth because it was too afraid to speak. As Maya continued to play out the story, she eventually said, I am the panda and my babysitter is the dragon, disclosing both physical and verbal abuse 
she experienced from her babysitter. At that time, I invited Maya's parents to be part of our sand tray sessions. Although they were not witness to the events that occurred with the babysitter, they were now able to get a glimpse into Maya's world and help her change the narrative. In these sessions, the parents added a big panda. The big panda gave the small panda the courage to break free from the fire and tra trap the dragon. The big panda offered the small panda strength, comfort, and compassion. Once Maya felt this internalized sense of safety and know that her story was truly witnessed and truly understood, her temper tantrums decreased. She stopped wetting the bed. She moved from a place of confusion to clarity and from shame to resilience. Billy was 16 when he came to my office. He was presenting with anxiety and perfectionism. Billy was having panic attacks at school, somatic complaints like stomach aches, and difficulty sleeping. Billy was overwhelmed with the stress in his life, and he definitely wanted to find some way to bring order to his chaos. So I invited Billy into the playroom. I offered him a basket and invited him to select miniatures from the shelves. Don't overthink it, I said. Just let your fingers do the walking, assuring Billy that there was no wrong way to create a sand tray. I then invited Billy to come sit next to me by the sand tray. I offered him brushes and rakes to create a backdrop of his story. He sat down and Billy raked the sand meticulously. And then he added a volcano to the center of the tray. He then added different miniatures that represented the different stressors in his life, like family, school, and peer pressure. In Billy's story, the volcano could erupt at any time. When I asked Billy what he needed to stop the volcano from erupting, he added a wizard, music, and nature, expressing that these are the things that create safety in his world, and these are the things that make him happy. So each week when Billy would come into session, I would check in with him and ask him, how big was the volcano this week? And were there moments when he thought it was going to erupt? Billy was able to identify when the lava, his anxiety, was boiling up inside of him and what he needed to do to cool it down. Let me share a final story of a 52-year-old woman who lost her twin sister at birth. She lived with this grief inside of her and felt a sense of shame that she was the one to survive, not her sister. She struggled with low self-esteem, anxiety, attentional issues, and organizational challenges. She created a story in the sand of two sisters that started off in the womb she called this place the wave womb. One day, one of the sisters had to leave and enter the world alone, leaving her sister behind. In the story, the sister came upon a magical portal where she was transported back to the wave womb, back to their special place. In the special place, her sister gave her a message I live inside of you, and we will always be together. 
I am the surviving sister in the story. And sand tray therapy has been a vital part of my healing process. We have all been affected by trauma, anxiety, and grief. Or at least we know those who have been affected by it. It may surprise you to know that over 52 million adults in the US experience a mental health issue, and over half of them do not receive help. According to the World Health Organization worldwide, 10% of children and teens experience a mental health issue, and most do not receive care. Suicide is the fourth leading cause of death for 15 to 19 year olds. How can we help people of all ages express and heal from trauma, anxiety, and grief? How do we create a sense of safety when words are not enough or not able to be spoken? Sandra therapy creates healing from the inside out. It gives our overactive thinking brains a rest. In mental health treatment, there is no one size fits all. If talking through your struggles hasn't felt safe or helpful enough, explore other ways. With a trained sand therapist, miniatures, and a tray of sand, your story could be told. A story with new depth of clarity and meaning, a very deep and personal story can unfold. A story that cannot be expressed through words alone. As I hope you have heard from the case studies today, the power of this modality that flies under the radar. I would like to end with a quote from American poet Maya Angelou. There is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside of you. Thank you.